So I've got how overriding contributed to the current IA situation and wave of inspect only. I'm betting they throw scope only at this entire hurricane season and force the culling of the IAs and firms. These carriers are taking the bull by the horns to reset the industry by prognostication. So a good buddy of mine as well posted that. But I mean, we don't know the future of what claims is going to be. Yeah. It is constantly evolving. New technology is always coming into the picture. Uh, I have been told many times this is a cyclical industry and you are going to see the pendulum swing in one direction one year as yep. well as in another direction the other year. Things change constantly. Yep. And it is the way of the industry. So I don't know if maybe overestimating did kind of shoot us in the foot there. There are plenty of people who, I mean, let's face it, we know that we get paid on a fee schedule based on the damages that we find. It's advantageous for us to find as much damage as possible. But when you are going in and saying that everything is premium or you're over scope, not over scoping, I should say more of overestimating, right. it becomes a dangerous game. And so you're writing things that don't belong in the estimate. You know, you're maybe just even dropping a macro. I don't want to point fingers at anyone because I could be pointing the finger back at myself. But at the end of the day, I love macros, man. Yeah, I just got to know how to use them. Yes, and I agree. I mean, there is, there are problems where you see somebody dropping in. My stepfather just brought this to me the other day. Somebody's using a macro and they're just dropping in every single room, not even going back and checking. And you've got a ceiling fan in the closet. Yeah, that is, they, that's, that's just a demonstration. They just don't know how to use the software. Exactly, and it it is a tool. At the end of the day, it is up to the user to define how it is used. And so, yeah. in this case. Maybe overestimating was the cause of all the seek now. I mean, I know at the end of the day, and I have had other firm owners tell me this as well, is that it is cheaper to use seek, excuse me, to use whoever it is in terms of ladder assist. Sure. Because even if that ladder assist messes up, they can still just send out another one and still make it's it to where than... it's then getting the actual adjuster out. Right. So it's tough, man. I, I, am not at the decision-making abilities of these firms. I can't read their minds and say, hey, this is exactly what contributed to it, but I can't say that might not have been one of the problems. I think that that's, that's a theory. Exactly. I don't know that there's, and I think it's, it's probably certainly part of it. I don't know that that's something that's that's been a trend or something that's changed over the past 20, 30 years, 40 years, because um, adjusters, the quality level has been variable since I started in the late nineties, right? So it's sure. it's everything that I see and everything I talk to the firms about. Um, and when I was at a carrier, you know, their comments about it, the independent adjusters were the same, you know, last year as they were in 1999. So I think that it's it's a broader, you know, over scoping. There's also under scoping, you know. So it's not so much that like adjusters are are uh, are underwriting that it's, it's not so much that they're, they're sort of nefariously trying to like fluff up their fee bill it's that they just don't really know what they're doing and ignorance is sometimes coming into right. play as well because you've got people who misidentify let's not say damages more so but the material itself yeah and jason yeah. heenan has talked about that on a adjuster talk i don't know if i'm supposed to stray away sure from others but don't worry about it don't, don't worry about it perfect Brands so, or anything just talk say whatever you want if you want to say state farm, state farm. <laughs> <laughs> but adjusted uh justin heenan had mentioned himself uh, train up that's what gets you to be more attractive yeah. to these firms it is your ability to identify damages or material and give a proper estimate and it shows through your work product and people will bring you back because of it. For you sure. have work product that you can stand behind is is everything in, yep. in our industry, I feel. I've And I've, I've maintained this, I figured this out early in my career and I've said it a gazillion times on this channel. And that is, is that I figured out if I could be, improve my skills across the board, including efficiency, customer service, file accuracy, um, by just 10%, five percent just a small amount that skyrocketed me right up at the first call list yeah that's how low the bar is so advice for new people advice for adjusters that have been doing this for a few years even who are like i'm you know i can't figure out why i can't make you know they just can't get it off the ground right and sure. i hear this from people if if you improve your skills if you if you put a lot of emphasis on efficiency you know, it's particular because we get we still are getting paid by the claim in, in a lot of in most situations, right? 
Um, if you can be faster and close more claims that stay closed, then you're going to make more money, period. So it's yeah. the difference between closing three claims in a day and closing five claims in a day, right? And are those five claims good? Can they're you look good. at them and say that there, there's nothing wrong with them? There's always going to be a always. variance, but you want to get that variance down to as little as possible. You've dialed in onto the proper way to write your estimate, the proper way to scope. You have a method to the madness. Yep. That's important. At the end of the day, the variances are what kills us, and we need to not only do that, but the timelines as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I was sitting at another seminar, same things being brought up. Timelines, why is the insured not contact within 24 hours? That's a yeah. big one. I think they were saying over, I want to say over 40%, 50% weren't getting in contact with the insured in a proper time frame. Yep. It is imperative. I mean, it's the guidelines to what we do. Yeah. 24 hours in a CAT scenario, 48 in a cat scenario, though, sometimes anything goes, but you need right. to make contact. First couple of weeks, anything goes. Absolutely. After that, they'll start. They they dial it in, man. <laughs> they'll start <laughs> tightening the screws. Exactly. So, yeah. So, I, I think uh, the way I look at this, is especially the, the over-scoping or the overwriting and underwriting um, situations, Xactimate, and this is, you know, as a, as sort of a side issue, a lot of people complain about the pricing Xactimate. Xactimate pricing is very good. The, what it is, is that it's like a golf club or a rifle, right? The bullet or the ball are going to go exactly where the thing is pointed. Yeah. And if you don't know how to point it, it's going to go over in the trees or in the other fairway or over the top of the target or in the dirt, right? If you, you have to learn how to use the tool and in order for it to, you know, give you accurate results. So Xactimate will only be as exact as accurate as a person who wields it, right? Yeah, and contractors can still step in with the pricing tool and and submit their yeah. differences of what they believe. I mean, I, I don't know the specifics on it, but I've seen PAs and contractors go to Verisk during their conferences at Elevate, yeah. and they mention to them, hey, the pricing is off. Is there any way that we can come up to a number or something along those lines? Oh, yeah, and so. they, do, it's, it, they, they do it on a storm-by-storm -storm basis. I mean, the number of times I've been on a storm where they're like, hey, listen, um, exactly, it's got you know $2.35 to reskin a trailer or whatever and it's actually $22 yeah. a square foot people need to hit the reprice yeah. tool as well I cannot yes. get that point across enough if you don't you're leaving money on the table your macro is your macro from before when you created it yep. you need to update your price list or update your use the repricing tool yeah always be using the current price list yes. in, in any capacity okay that was all well and good but what if you haven't even gotten started yet you're not quite sure like what an adjuster license is, or even which one or ones to get. You don't know what gear and tools to buy. Do you even need a drone? In short, you wanna know how to get started as a claims adjuster. How can you start adjusting claims? For money, right? We put together a comprehensive seven video series explaining in detail, step-by-step, -step, the complete beginner's guide to getting started as an independent property adjuster. This is where you wanna start, and the best part, it's completely free, and you can get started watching it right now at adjustertv.com slash start. In the meantime, YouTube has picked out a special video just for you. See you in the next one.